All right, welcome to Breeze at the Gate. This is our video blog for December first. It has been a while since we've been here. We've had Thanksgiving holidays. We've had other responsibilities that have dragged us in multiple directions, but we're back, much to the rejoicing of our two or three dozen viewers. So uh, it's good to see you. It's good to engage on these topics. There's always something going on. Today we heard uh, that Michael Flynn has reached a plea agreement with the federal government. Mark, do you want to sort of give us an update on what's going on with Michael Flynn? And what happened was um, there was an information file. Not a, this was not a grand jury information, which meant he came forward voluntarily and admitted that he had lied to the FBI or made false statements to the FBI regarding meetings with a Russian agent post-election on four different occasions. Um, so uh, he will be charged with that. And the plea was that if he, if he pled to this, the plea deal was if he pled to this, uh, it would, he might spend a couple of weeks in jail, if that much. Right. Probably nothing, right. likely. So that's the, those are the basic facts of it now. Uh, you know, behind all that, we have to yeah. ask the question, what sure. is really going on? Yeah. Why, is, why is Mueller, Robert Mueller, so interested in, in having him do that? The plea deal itself, uh, I think that's pretty evident. If you know what special prosecutors do, they look for dirt, right? He's got to find dirt to use against other people. And if he can use, Mueller, uh, use a Flynn to go after other people, he'll, he'll do that. So, Is it safe to say that uh, he would not have offered this plea deal to Flynn for nothing, that there has to be some other information lurking back there that Mueller either already knows or has a good idea about. If he thinks, so if he thinks, otherwise he would let him twist in the wind. Right, yeah, and so typically. he's going to maximize his leverage. Yeah, he thinks at this point this is the way to get to what he needs to do. Yeah, so we really don't know what Flynn knows precisely. Is that right? Right, right. but there is a problem with this. Here's the problem: it's not illegal to speak with a Russian agent as long as he's a registered agent. So. Uh, what's back there, right? And, and as, as Jeff had pointed out before, I'll, I'll let him say it. Go ahead, say it. The problem about <laughs> the fact that this was post-election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the dates to the, for the uh, false yeah. statements uh, were, were after the election. And uh, at that point, you have an incoming administration. It seems reasonable that the, the prospective national security advisor might be in sure. some of these conversations. Yeah. 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 And for the president to want to have some of those, yeah. the president-elect at that time, to want to have some of those conversations doesn't se seem to me to be untoward. Yeah. No. So, not at all. It's what, not illegal. What ABC News was reporting just before we got on mm -hmm. the air was that Flynn is going to talk to them, that, that the president-elect directed him to contact mm -hmm. the Russians. And again, if it was just to set up yeah. diplomatic channels, or arrange meetings, and discuss issues, that's perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal. So we really still aren't near that collusion threshold anywhere close to that as no. of yet. Is that right? But we're certainly not close to any collusion regarding affecting the, the outcome of the election. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, what are they, you know, here we have... The president, maybe the president, directed uh, Flynn to do this. Sure. So what? He can, yeah. he can talk to the registered agent. The president can talk to Flynn, or the president-elect can talk to Flynn. This is not a problem. But I do think it's fair to say this is a different order of magnitude than Paul Manafort. Flynn yes. was closer to the Trump administration in terms of policy. Certainly had the ear of the president, a key figure in the transition, mm -hmm. key post in the new administration. Yeah. This is not a good day for Donald Trump. I would say at least. Right. Is that right? If anything's going to come of it, if anything's going to come of it. He's uh, um, um, the special prosecutor is moving in the right direction. Yeah, he's that's getting what, that's, closer, which is what if he something's going to come of it. That's right, and right. it could be that it stops here. Right, and, and in that sense, it could be a good day. Yeah. Because, I mean, Mueller's got to find something, right? right? And this, if he gets this conviction and he closes shop, he can't get anything else. At least he got something. They had, uh, you know, pound of flesh. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Bert, what do you think? Well, again, I, I don't read it exactly like you are. I read it more like your initial question mm -hmm. that there is a likely something there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why uh, Flynn would uh, plead guilty to lying about uh, activity that was not criminal that itself mm -hmm. there's oh. nothing, nothing wrong with. Because that there's it carries else going on. a long sentence. Oh, five years. Sixty years if you, if 60? the whole sentence, if it's not plea bargained down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He doesn't want to do that. But the rationale for, that I yeah. uh, mm -hmm. saw earlier, I did see something in some of the press reports that uh, Mr. Flynn's son was also involved in some of the uh, the company or some uh, discussions with the Russians, such that he may have an interest in, maybe there had been an implicit threat to go after his son, had he not. And I yeah. don't know if that was part it's of the deal or not. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think it will just be supposition yeah. until we know exactly more, more about what's going on. But this certainly has a feeling of hardball. Oh, no yeah. question. Not softball. No so. question. Interesting to see how it comes and, and so the, the, the hardball kind of concern that I have, and I, we were talking about this earlier uh, that I want to share with the, the 
viewership here, is the idea for us, I, I believe, as we, when we look at this as Christians, is we should be thinking, our goal should be for justice to be blind. And it's, it's really hard for me to see that this process is an impartial process. I, I think we, we, we want to have a situation where all of these kinds of crimes would be treated equally. For instance, uh, with Mr. Manafort, we had a f failure to, uh, to register as a foreign a agent or representing a foreign agent. Right. What, what we've read is that's a fairly commonplace, not that it's, it's approved, it is against the law, sure. but many people could be charged, yet only one person was charged. Right. That yeah. it ought to be troubling to all of us, and I think we're, we're seeing similar things. Mr. Flynn is, own, clearly, I mean, he made false misstatements to the FBI. Why were they even asking him questions? They had the tapes already. They know what he had said because uh, the, uh, the Russian ambassador was already subject to, to the, the wiretapping. So mm -hmm. they didn't need it. So they were after him. And sure. so we ought to be a little bit concerned when government can go after somebody if they are part of a political persuasion we do not like that ought to trouble us at some level. And you just raised the issue right there, right? I mean, one of the great enemies of equality before the law is politics. Yes. And <laughs> special prosecutors are inherently a political they are. manifestation. That's They're the not a pure product of the judicial system or sort of justice, you know, lady justice with her mm -hmm. blindfold on. Yeah. And so you've automatically sort of stained the whole thing just from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've seen this before, yes. and it's, it, there's a political consequence to this, which is really the president, probably ultimately the legal consequences, which is really what you're getting at, get awfully hairy and sometimes get yeah. unequally distributed. I think that's fair. All right, let's move on here. Let's talk about tax reform. Uh, it appeared, I, I thought there was a, de a deal that appeared to be imminent yeah. as of yesterday, and then all of a sudden things sort of started to go off the rails. So what exactly has gone off the rails? Let's start there. Jeff. Well, I don't think it's off the rails. As of just a little bit ago, uh, New uh, we have uh, the votes according to McConnell. He says he's got them. And he uh, Flake is on board now, and even uh, Corker, Corker may come alongside. Uh, so they've, they, yes, he, he's at least said he's uh, not not, not going to fight the charge. Uh, that we should see the vote later today, in my expectation. So the issue, as far as I know it, had been spending, mm -hmm. right? There weren't enough caps on spending, so that this is going to mm -hmm. create more um, debt over the long yeah, haul. Larger so people like Corker were resisting this. Sure. So has something been fixed? You know, have they changed the bill? <clears throat> I have no idea. The, the, each one of the, the ones that uh, were against it had uh, particular issues they were concerned about, and one by one they are addressing some of those, uh, as, gotcha. as we expect. Sure. Uh, Ron Johnson, for instance, yeah, in Wisconsin, he's now on board. Oh. I, I, I do not know what they placated him with, but uh, as, hmm. as uh, in our class we talked about that a little bit, you could be sure that they, they would exercise, uh, given the slim majority, every senator had an incentive oh, yeah. to exercise maximum leverage yeah. to get their particular issues in there, yes, yep. and so that's the process we saw. But at the end of the day, uh, as we have long suspected, the Republicans have to do something. And McConnell, as of just a few hours ago, said he has the votes, and I expect to see it perhaps mm. later today. Bert, what do you think about what we appear to have as far as we know? Granted, like Jeff said, this thing's probably being rewritten as we speak, but what do you think we have right now? Well, <clears throat> I know just in terms of a little bit of detail, the uh, Senate plan uh, completely had eliminated the deduction for state and local taxes, mm -hmm. and I believe as one of the concessions, they've added Collins. the 10000 yeah, the $10,000 cap uh, okay. back in on property taxes mm. for Colin, so you can deduct up to 10000 to get, you know, to get her on. So yeah. uh, I think that's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, that we're looking at politically. And, uh, you know, hopefully very soon we will see the actual bill. It'll go to the president's <laughs> desk and then we'll know. You know then, then we'll know. I mean, I, yeah. I, the, in my mind, you know, you've still got differences like the... Uh, repeal of uh, uh, the mandate for Obamacare. Yeah. So right. that's, that's a very that's big deal. So we'll see how all that, that works out and we'll be able to tell a little bit more. Yeah. It'll go to the conference committee. Yeah, conference. conference committee, a lot of these differences will be ironed out there, mm -hmm. but they do have limits on what they can do in conference mm -hmm. committee because this is a budgetary resolution, yeah. so they can't simply just do whatever they like in that process. Right. Um, we could, I guess we could be just a few days away from this thing getting totally done, is that right? Well, Mr. Trump has promised us a great Christmas present, so I, I think it could <laughs> So we have 25 days then. <laughs> As we know, Mr. Trump is very faithful in keeping all those promises, <laughs> right? So that's very good. Very good. Uh, let's talk about Masterpiece Cake Shop. Um, all of us read a blog post this week. I think we did. Is that right? A <laughs> uh, blog post this week that dealt with Masterpiece Cake Shop a little bit more from an economic perspective, not just purely First Amendment, but also from an economic perspective. Um, Jeff, do you want to sort of get us started off on what the... First of all, we can go through what Masterpiece Cake Shop is, what the issue is, but then we can get into the economic aspect so, as well. So Masterpiece... Masterpiece Cake Shop is the, the baker in Colorado that was yep. asked to uh, produce a cake for a gay wedding. A and he refused. Of course, he had uh, uh, gay customers in right. other uh, 
uh, ventures where he would cook for them, but not a wedding cake. And that was what he was asked to do, to have a rainbow on. He refused, right. uh, claiming that that would force him to promote a message that was contrary to his religious viewpoints. Uh, he was... Uh, um, um, Find. Sued, find, or yep. first, then, then, then yeah. they took, they took it all the way court. to the Supreme Court. And so, so what it's going, it's it's now at the Supreme Court, and yeah. so the question is, what's going to happen? And I don't know the timeline. You, you guys know a lot fifth. better than I do. December fifth, uh, right? But right. but uh, this week there was a very interesting article by Richard Epstein, who's one of the preeminent uh, legal law and economic scholars yep. at the University of Chicago, and he he was making the point that, and he's filed this brief on behalf of uh, the the cake builder that look, uh, we we have two conflicting rights here. Uh, basically, and we ought to to side on the right that has the least impact. And because the, uh, if you go on, for instance, the uh, the gay wedding site uh, website in Colorado, there, there were 66 gay uh, wedding cake bakers, many of whom with, within walking distance of the uh, right. the particular um, vendor that was was refusing to make the cake, such that there would be virtually no impact yeah. to the the homosexual couple that wanted to have a wedding cake. Whereas the other, uh, if we go the other direction, we would we would have a person be forced to promote an image or, or a message, excuse me, that they find offensive according to their faith perspective. Yeah. And so from that perspective, you try to balance those considerations, it, it seems like you should go in favor of the baker. And that's basically what yeah. uh, he's advocated. So that was an interesting article. Yeah. Yeah. Bert, what do you think Great about it? I, I agree with the uh, particular e economic, uh, economic argument. And you know, th this, there's no way this gentleman should have been forced into doing something that was against his conscience. Yeah. And uh, I think there are uh, uh, embedded uh, religious liberty issues or free speech uh -huh. issues that are here. Oh, and I look at it, and from my perspective, I don't see uh, uh, how the court you know, could do anything other than vindicate Mr. Phillips, but right. I mean, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Well, the mere fact that they took the case in the first place is, is often, <clears throat> not always, but often a sign. If the, if the Colorado Supreme Court says you're guilty, Right, and the Supreme Court takes the case. Yeah, it kind of looks like they're going to lean in the direction of um, of the cake baker, to me anyway. Maybe, but this issue is so yeah, pressing, it's, and it's going to show up again and again and again until they have to resolve it. Yeah, so maybe this is well, just a unique way for them to do it, or an early way for be. them to do it, I should say. So, so I do th I do see a problem with trying to define what the con trying to draw the line on the conscience. Where does oh, that sure. become legitimate? That's yeah. not an economic issue, obviously. When do we have a real, substantial yeah. religious burden? Well, there's yeah. an economic element to it because there's no yeah. harm done to this couple yeah. at all. Oh, they yeah. would argue psychic harm. Yeah. Emotional yeah. trauma. Yeah. Emotional yeah. trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Take it off and walk 50 yards down well, the street. What, 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 <laughs> what about the psychic harm to the baker? Right, that's, a, that's, a, question. that's a question. That's a question. That's exactly right. Well, and this is this is one way to distinguish this kind of case from what we saw in the 1960s, right? Because mm -hmm. this this same issue came up, and sure. uh, when we get to public accommodations, the 1960s, yeah. the Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. dealt with this issue. Yeah. There, African Americans were really frozen out of the economy, sure. broadly speaking, yeah. without clear alternatives mm -hmm. or even sometimes mm -hmm. options whatsoever. Right. Here we have this couple that could have gone, like you said, 60 plus places, would have been really easy distance, yeah. so really not much of a harm. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking uh, at a wedding, right. you want the wedding to come off being good. You don't want to have to have a fight. Right. You know, if you want a, a cake, you want it to go smoothly. Yeah. So it looks to me like they're just, you know, trying to use this politically, which they obviously are. Well, I yeah. think that's as opposed to yeah. really that's evident. being about the issue. It's a test case yeah. for right. that. Yeah. Still, I think potentially maybe one of the most important Supreme Court decisions in the last well, it's huge. five, Absolutely. ten, twenty years. We'll see. Yes. So I think from be. a perspective of a Christian, it is. It's very yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. But it, beyond a Christian perspective, now that's the really great case that Russell Moore continues to make with the Religious Liberty Commission and Ethics Commission is is that. This is religious freedom writ large. This is it not is. just about Christian. It if, is. if if yeah, we I don't have this, right. Christian yeah, against other but, but, but that's that's right. hugely important for all of us. Without uh, religious freedom, nobody has any freedoms. Uh, yeah, and we get down to the speech part of it. Yes, the speech part is <laughs> you involved. Know, can too. you force uh, a person who has a certain set of beliefs to, to act message. exactly against those mm -hmm. beliefs when it comes to a business transaction? Mm -hmm. How, how is, is is there any difference in that question between the question about the abortion? Uh, uh, logic that they have to do now in the California uh, pro-life, uh, help me out there. In California, they passed a law where if you oh, are yes. a, a, a um, you're required to, required to, to promote, advertise, show that there yes. are yeah, yeah, abortion yeah. alternatives yeah. Yes. Uh, if you're at a crisis pregnancy center, that's where I was. But then that was a speech issue. So, so is that any different and, and does that play in here? Um, I think there, there are parallels. Um, I, I, I try to remember enough about that case to know what the parallels are. But there are certainly parallels between the two. You're, you're, you're forced to express mm -hmm. a certain belief that you don't agree with, right. which is related, 
Yeah, to religion, yes, but or in many cases, religious beliefs, but it doesn't have to be. It could be just speech alone, whatever that speech might right. be. On the other hand, you're forced to, to artistically express something that you don't believe, yeah. right? that you don't want to express, right? So, and you know, the parallels are there. There are um, some parallels, but unlike a woman who would, let's say, be in that crisis position, mm -hmm. they're actually making a choice at yeah. that point. This would be almost like the gay couple coming in and say, should we get married? Oh, well, mm -hmm. here's a cake. Here's, I mean, it's a different kind of choice that's being exercised at that moment in California, I think. Uh, and I don't know about the number of providers, which, again, I hate to even talk in that language. You're talking about sure. a human being. but yeah. um, And, of course, the court has been very, very protective of reproductive rights for them, oh, extraordinarily yes. protective. Yes. And so they would view that as a fundamental right, and mm -hmm. they would treat it as such when they, when they litigate it. So, but then the question but still remains parallels. on the other side, from the, from the uh, perspective of the, the pro-life groups, should we be forced to tell people yeah, that explicitly? That's right. Yep. Right? So one thing, they, they have a choice, yes. Yep. But do we, have to, do we have to tell them, almost inviting them, <clears throat> they would argue, required to take advantage speech. of this? Yeah, required speech. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Of course, the most important news event of the upcoming week is the uh, University of Georgia is playing the SEC championship <laughs> game tomorrow. Uh, hopefully we'll get this posted before that result is known. <laughs> we will assume they will be victorious and go from there. Any dissenting opinions Who on that? Who are they playing? Who are they playing? Auburn. Oh, I don't. I have a dissenting opinion. <laughs> I think Auburn is looking well, awfully very, good. Very uh, difficult for Auburn to completely decimate and crush them two times <laughs> in one year. Uh, <laughs> so, it will but you're be saying difficult. it happened once. It happened once. It did so it happen happen once. Again. It very, uh, <laughs> it's tough to beat a good team twice in the same year. It is. It so really is. we'll Sorry. hope we'll hope Jeff's right. Wait, where we'll are we see. playing this game? Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, the new mm. Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Home field. Uh, more home than the last time we played Auburn, <laughs> yeah. at Auburn. So, okay. Anyway, regardless, thank you for, for listening. Thank you for watching. We appreciate all of you. Continue to send us your questions in the comments below this post, and we will see you later.